In this video, I want to develop a gravitational force model. Now, the model for the gravitational force is particularly simple. So really what I want to do is also use this to talk about models and how to use those models to create mathematical representations which we can use to solve physics problems. And since uh, we want to practice that on something particularly easy, we can do this with a gravitational force model. A couple approximations are important. Uh, and until otherwise specified, um, we are going to assume that we are near the surface of the Earth. Near surface of Earth and given that, we are going to uh, use the flat Earth assumption. And so we're not worried about uh, the curvature or distances far from the surface of the Earth. We sort of have a, a, a flat Earth, and then we're looking for the gravitational effect on all the people and objects near the surface of the Earth. Okay, so the gravitational force model, so let's look at the gravitational force. We say that there is a gravitational force gravitational force on an object by the Earth. Okay, you can see what I did there. I sort of constructed this uh, in our in, in sort of a sentence. This is the type of force, gravitational. It's on an object and it's by the Earth. In this case the agent here is the Earth. Okay, so what that's the the statement of our force. What is the model? This force then has a magnitude that's given by the uh, mass of object times the constant acceleration due to gravity which we call g and we've seen that before in the unit on motion g is a positive constant and it is uh, approximately, it depends on the precision with which you want to know it, approximately 10 or 9.8 or maybe 9.81. It depends on your altitude and other factors, but it is some positive constant which you would uh, measure or might be given in a particular problem. Okay, so that's the magnitude, mass of the object times this positive constant known as the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, the direction of this force, the uh, force is a vector, so we need both a magnitude and a direction, then is toward center of Earth. Okay, so you'll see that the gravitational force model that I have here does not involve any particular equation. And that's common in these sorts of models. If you're just hunting for equations, uh, you'll that's probably a mistake because the mathematical representation depends on the specific situation that's involved. And so in this case, the mathematical representation depends on the coordinate system that you would use. So let's do this in a in a couple easy examples to see how it works. So imagine we have our physics professor who's falling down an empty elevator shaft here is flailing his arms wildly um, and let's say has a mass of 80 kilograms. What is the gravitational force that is acting on this person? All right. Well, and there's going to be a magnitude and that magnitude is going to be the mass of the physics professor which I'll call m sub p times g the acceleration due to gravity and it's in 
units of newtons. And so now we can identify what the units are. If the magnitude is the mass times the acceleration due to gravity, mass is in kilograms, acceleration is meters per second squared, so this gives us the units of newtons in terms of our, our other variables. But what is the direction? Well, the direction depends on the coordinate system. So if I were to say, let's set up a coordinate system where up is the positive x direction, I often do that. If I'm simply in one dimension, the person is falling, I could have a, say, a positive y over here if I wanted the positive z out of the page. Uh, doesn't really matter. But in this case, if I say the positive x-axis is up, to find the direction, of course, I need to find the center toward the center of the Earth. Well, s person is falling, there's some bottom somewhere below, the center of Earth is going to be that way. And so the direction then, given this coordinate system, is going to be the negative x direction for the gravitational force. So now, given my picture, my coordinate system, and the model of the gravitational force, I can now come up with a mathematical representation of that force. The gravitational force, which I'll, you know, it's a vector, and I call it F sub G, lack of anything else, is equal to the uh, magnitude of the force, which is mass of the professor times g, and it is in the negative x direction, so I'll give it a negative sign and the unit vector that corresponds to the uh, x-axis. So this is now the vector gravitational force, and we can go ahead and calculate that if the mass is 80 and we'll use, uh, say, 9.8, for g, this is then equal to negative 784 i-hat newtons. So we have a force with a magnitude and a direction and units. Okay, so let's, let's do a couple more to, to give us some more practice. In this case, we're going to have, uh, let's see... A cannon, we're going to shoot our physics professor out of a cannon. So now they're traveling uh, at some angle with some velocity. So now what is the force due to gravity on uh, this, this person? Well, the magnitude of the gravitational force is exactly the same. It's uh, mass of the uh, professor times g that doesn't ch that doesn't change, and just because the person is traveling in a different velocity, that does not affect the uh, the gravitational force at all. Nowhere in our model does um, does that matter. Okay, but now let's if we're going to do a direction, let's come up with a different coordinate system. In this case, I have a two dimensional example, and so for just to, for a, a different situation, I'm going to call the horizontal positive x, and I'm going to call down positive y. In this case, positive z would be into the uh, into the page or into the screen. So I now have a different coordinate system, which means I'm going to have a different direction for my. Uh, for my gravitational force, because the model says the gravitational force direction is always toward the center of the Earth. So in this new coordinate system, the center of the Earth is down, which is going to be the positive y-axis. So here, the direction is positive y. So now, if I want to translate, use the model and my picture and my coordinate system to translate the definition of the model into a mathematical representation. My force due to gravity is equal to the magnitude, which is mpg, and this is the positive y direction, so positive j hat 
my force due to gravity will be a positive 784 j hat newtons. So again, there is no one specific formula, but you have to be able to translate what the model says into each problem given the coordinate system. Okay, let's do one more that's slightly more complicated. In this case, I'm going to have an incline and my physics professor sliding down the incline just to create some excitement into water with sharks. Okay, what sort of gravitational force is acting on the person? Okay, so the force due to gravity is long range again, so that's not a problem. What is the magnitude of the force? That hasn't changed either. Magnitude of the force is the mass of the object times the acceleration due to gravity. That's perfectly fine. But now we have to come up with a direction. Okay. Now, uh, to do that, I need a coordinate system. I could choose the coordinate system I had before, but, uh, you know, most likely that's not a good um, coordinate system to choose. When we looked at motion, and we looked at motion on inclined planes, we found that it was really useful to have one of the axes to be along the motion in the inclined plane, and the other axis, and the other axis to be perpendicular to the inclined plane. So I want to choose this to be my positive x along the inclined plane, and the positive y to be perpendicular to the inclined plane. So what does that do to the direction of my gravitational force. Well, it sort of, if we look in the graphical uh, picture of forces, this is some angle theta. And so if I look at vertical and horizontal, I know that um, the, I could, I could calculate the, given this angle, sort of where the gravitational force is relative to the horizontal. But what I really want is, is in component form. I want to be able to uh, look at the components of the force along the x and y axis, just like I did here. So this requ this requires a, a little bit more than just saying, well, the force is going to be at at uh, at some other angle. In this case, what I like to do when I'm working with inclined planes and gravity, I like to create a coordinate system. Uh, sorry, a set of axes that are parallel and perpendicular to the surface of the Earth. That really I sort of helps me out. I have the surface of the Earth down here, and I have a set of axes which are uh, parallel and perpendicular. Then I have a second set of axes which are uh, parallel and perpendicular to my inclined plane. So this, as we've seen, is the positive y, this is the positive x, negative x, negative y. And I like to get all of that out there. So I have two axes that are rotated relative to each other by an angle. And I can go ahead and find that angle. This angle right here is theta. And as long as I have my full axes, I know that that's theta. And that's theta. That is theta. And that is theta. I can get all of that out there right away. And that uh, helps me understand the relationships between um, all the angles. Okay, so now I need to find the direction of the gravitational force. My model says my gravitational force points towards the center of the Earth, and it has this magnitude. Well, here's the Earth, so given my coordinate system, this is the 
force due to gravity pointing toward the center of the Earth. And I want to find what are its uh, components on the X and Y axes. So to, to find the components, we need to do projections. And so we can do some practice doing that. To do projections on an axis, we go to the tip of the vector and we draw a line to one of the axes such that that line is perpendicular to the axis. Then we can find the components which are the lines that make up the uh, the the component vectors to, that add to the full vector. Okay, so what we want to do first is to find the magnitudes of those components. To find the magnitudes of those components, we can just use basic trigonometry. So first of all, I want to find. Let's do let's do this. The magnitude of this line. Now we know the magnitude of the hypotenuse. The magnitude of the hypotenuse of this triangle is the mass of the physics professor times g. That's the magnitude of the force due to gravity. That's our full vector. So if we want to find the length of this uh, component right here, this would be mpg sine theta. Remember from the beginning, this is theta, and so this is theta. And next, I want to find the length of this side of the triangle. And that length is the hypotenuse, mpg cos theta. And so when finding components, I always like to go two by picture that's set up like this, using basic trigonometry to find the lengths of all the various lines. Now, when I go back and put together the final vector, whether the components are positive or negative, I can find directly from the picture itself. All right, so here's my force due to gravity. It's going to have an x component, and that x component what is the magnitude of the x component? Well, that magnitude is right here. So that's mpg sine theta i hat. And is it positive or negative? It is going in the positive x direction. That's great. And then it's going to have a y component. And that y component is the length of this line. And that's mpg cos theta j hat and then from my picture I can see that it's pointing in the negative y direction so my minus sign is there. I find the lengths of my components from the picture and then the signs from the coordinate system. Now let's say if, if we say uh, theta is equal to say 30 degrees, sine is of theta is one half, cosine theta is a square root of three over two. Uh, MPG we found before was a value of 784. We could then calculate our force due to gravity, 392 i hat minus 392 times the square root of three, j hat in newtons. So what did we learn? Uh, a couple things. One is when, uh, when dealing with the components like this, it's good to get yourself a big picture, find the lengths of your components using basic trigonometry, the signs from your coordinate system, but also that for many of our forces, including a simple force like gravity, our model is going to be descriptive and then to translate that descriptive model into specific equations will take using pictures and our coordinate systems to create the mathematical representation.